To hear more, listen to the podcast. Just search for Hancock and Kelly. Welcome back to Hancock and Kelly. Here's an update to a debate we've been having for quite some time on this show. Should the number of aldermen be cut in half in St. Louis? Recently, St. Louis Mayor Lida Cruz vetoed a bill that would let voters decide again on shrinking the board of aldermen. Back in 2012, voters approved cutting the number of wards from 28 to 14. Supporters say it would reflect the city's population decline over several decades. We're down to 300,000 people, folks. This, by the way, will take effect in 2023 if it stands. But some aldermen want a do-over to maintain more elected representation. Interesting because many of these aldermen were outspoken over the do-over of Clean Missouri because they made the case the will of the voters should be final. Now they think the voters don't know what they're doing. Michael, you're up first on this one. Should we shrink? Yes, we should shrink it even more than in half right now. There's a million people in St. Louis County and they have seven county council members. We have 28 aldermen, we're gonna go to 14. We probably need seven or eight. Look, this is politicians taking care of themselves. Um, and look, the voters have spoken on this and kudos to Mayor Cruz and for vetoing it because it's time to move forward from this nonsense. This is no longer 1900 St. Louis, this is 2021. John. Well, you know, I do campaigns for a living ground, so I'm in favor of having as many elected officials as possible. But in this instance, uh, the, the Board of Aldermen is too big. and It's unwieldy. Uh, it's getting increasingly difficult for the city to pass policy. It's a one-party city, uh, but there's still so much division on that, uh, on that Board of Aldermen. So, yeah, they need to shrink. They need to shrink in half. And I'm with Michael. Let's take them down to seven or eight. That'd be awesome. Okay, so uh, people, you know, we have these discussions. They say, well, what's it like in other cities? So... Being a thinking man, I decided to compare it. Here are the numbers. Here are just a few of the cities I found to put it in context. St. Louis has a population of 308,000. We have 28. That's one for every 11,000 residents. At the high end, Los Angeles, they have 15 for 3.8 million. That's one alderman for every 255,000 people. If that was the case here, we'd have one, right? We'd have the mayor. That's it. Detroit has nine for 910,000. That's 91,000. The only city close to us is Pittsburgh. Nine aldermen for 311,000 residents. That's one for every 35,000 or about three times what St. Louis currently has. So, Michael, you're right. We're not even close with these other. We're, we're so far out of bounds with what other cities are doing. It's kind of ridiculous. Well, and it goes to this narrative of change in St. Louis. We, we need like every it. opportunity for change with a ball bat. This is common sense. Those cities that you just put up there are thriving. St. Louis is dying, and what are we going to do? We're going to try to hold on to the past. Knock it off. All right, let's talk about COVID in Missouri. According to a report by the CDC, Missouri ranks last among <laughs> all states for the number of people per capita getting their first COVID shot. Now, I know we like to make fun of what Arkansas and Mississippi for some reason here in Missouri, but they're both way ahead of us. The governor says the numbers are skewed, they're not accurate, but even if these numbers aren't completely accurate, we're still bad. Thus, our new state motto, show me how to make Nebraska look good. John Hancock, I mean, this is bad. I went to Florida, there are lines of people, thousands of people in line every single day across the state to get the shots. We can't seem to get them at all here. Well, I think you've got, a, on the one end, you've got a supply problem uh, that perhaps we don't have the, the volume of, of shots that we need to have. Uh, the other thing is I think it's getting better. Uh, the, the state is setting up some of these satellite locations throughout the state. I think the, the rate of vaccination is going to pick up greatly. But, you know, it's not a great thing to be number 50 in anything. Right, Michael. People say, what's the problem? I don't know. I just know we're not doing very well, so there is a problem. Well, John talks about one-party control. That's essentially what we have in Jefferson City. We had a governor give the state of the state address this week. He designated about three lines to COVID in this situation. I mean, this man's not even living in reality. This is not a surprise. We've been waiting for this for nine months. To blame it on the CDC, that sounds Trumpian to me. To say that we're not getting our fair share of vaccines, give me a break. Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, you have to work hard to be worse than Mississippi and Alabama in this country. I'm, not, I'm sick and tired of watching us elect Republicans who aren't out doing the work. Meanwhile, this governor's running around putting on, you know, getting COVID himself. Come on, what, what is he up to? This is insane. You know, Michael, you just made a point there that something you and I discussed on the phone maybe a week ago is that we are such a unique situation in Missouri. It's a little off topic, but it kind of all ties together. In the city of St. Louis, we're way far left and we elect somebody like, like a Cory Bush, right? 
And then on the statewide, we have a Josh Hawley. All in the same state. It just seems a little strange that that's what our elected officials are, that diverse anyway. You know, when, when I first started in politics, we were considered a bellwether state. How went Missouri went the rest of the country? Well, the rest of the country is going nutty. Um, and Missouri is keeping up with that, with this extremes, uh, you know, and it, it's not healthy for us. It's not putting Missouri in a good light. And ultimately, I think it's putting us at a disadvantage in Washington and other places. Well, yeah. in, in defense of Republican governance in the state, uh, because of our economy, because of our lower regulations and lower taxes, we are one of the states, uh, I think number seven in the country, for relocations. People are coming to Missouri because it's well governed, it's fiscally prudent, and, uh, and I, for one, am grateful for that. All right, still to come here on Hancock and Kelly, day traders trying to level the playing field against Wall Street. You've watched this all week take place with GameStop, but the big brokerage firms didn't like having the game played against them. We'll discuss this one coming up, along with a little sports action on Hancock and Kelly. I had a plan, was a big bad.